Heimdale, a senior keeper here at Stone Zoo. And today is Endangered Species Day. Here at Zoo New England, we have a lot of programs that we work with, with many different plants and animals that are endangered species. Um, this is the 15th anniversary of that day, and we'll be highlighting some endangered animals today, including we're at our Mexican gray wolf exhibit, and these guys were introduced a little over a month ago to this new exhibit. Um, so we're going to be panning a little bit so you can see them. They're a little bit on the shy side, so hopefully uh, they'll come a little bit closer during this, and I'll try to identify them for you. But I'm going to talk a little bit about our Mexican gray wolves. They are one of the most endangered mammals in North America. They are a dis uh, very distinct subspecies of gray wolf and were extinct from the wild back in the late 1970s. A handful were left in the wild, which were put into a captive breeding program to try to save the species, uh, which has been pretty successful. They've been reintroduced in the Apache and Gila natural forests in uh, Arizona and New Mexico, and recent numbers have 163 animals in the wild, with more here in uh, captivity that are being uh, preserved for genetics, uh, and in case we need to continue breeding them uh, to save the species. They are one of the smaller of the gray wolves, um, and they are generally also in the southernmost region. You don't find too many other gray wolves uh, further south than these guys. Uh, so we have one of the wolves over there kind of peeking. As we said, they are a little bit on the shy side. Uh, so we were lucky enough to get six Mexican gray wolves. Uh, these guys are all brothers. They had their birthday last Friday. They are now two years old. Um, and they're from a litter of nine altogether. So there were three girls. They were born at the Wolf uh, Conservation Center in New York. And so the boys all came here. Uh, we have uh, Frankhead, which is the runt. Uh, he might be a little on the small side, but his personality is the biggest of all of the wolves here. Um, he is approximately 20 pigs, which is about 45 pounds, so he's a, a lot smaller than the other ones. Um, our largest wolf is Carson. Uh, his last weight had him at about 29 pigs, so he's probably right around 65 pounds, so there's a bit of a difference there. Uh, Craighead is actually, as I said, the most personable. Um, being the runt, they had two runts, a male and a female, and um, these guys are pretty amazing. They survive, they're pretty healthy, and he's the one who actually comes the closest. He is the most curious um, of the entire pack. Um, he does have a buddy who is often with him, which is Mittermeier. Um, these guys were all named after female conservationists. So that's how they got their name, which is really awesome. So Craighead and Mittermeier are often found uh, together running around. Uh, we also have Leek, we have Carson, we have Goodall, and we have Beatty. Um, of the six, Beatty is the shyest. Uh, but what we find with wolf packs is all of this changes. This is very new habitat to them. It's a very large habitat. It's almost one acre. Uh, it features all natural rocks, outcrops, a wooded area. It has a river, a pool, and a waterfall. Um, it has multi layers. And if you come to the zoo and you're looking for the wolves, one of the best places to look for them is all the way up top. They have a great view of everything that's going around them by looking down onto the street. Um, and you can't always see them. There's great camouflage for these guys if they don't want to be seen. 
but being really young wolves are actually fairly active. Um, it's been a little on the shy side today. There's a lot of construction going on here in Stoneham, Mass, um, just on the other side of the zoo. Um, and that's keeping them a little bit on the quiet side. So we are constantly taking pictures of these guys so that we can identify them, see who is thriving, who is with who. It gives us a lot of uh, great information. Um, they are, they look very similar, but uh, there are some differences um, that we look for both in appearance um, and sometimes behavior. Um, right now, as we said, Craighead is the one who is generally comes closest uh, to the window where we were just, uh, we're at the topmost viewing window here. And his statue is a little bit small, but if you look at his tail, which tells basically who's dominant, and right now nobody's super dominant, but he often has his tail raised a little bit. So his dominance, or at least he tries to have a fairly dominant um, posture uh, when it comes to the other wolves as well as us. Um, but Craighead, if you look at him, his left eye, right underneath, he has a, a very strong line that goes down um, towards his cheek. So that's a really good indicator, um, something that we can see pretty quickly. Um, so we have both behavior and we have um, something that we can look for for him. His buddy Mittermeier happens to be another wolf that's actually fairly easy to identify from looks. Uh, we call him Bushy Brows as well because he's got some great, uh, very light gray brows right above his eyes. Uh, and they are very noticeable. Um, he also doesn't have a lot of markings underneath his eyes. Um, so those two are very easy for us to identify. Uh, Leek is another one. Uh, when you look at Leek, Leek is very symmetrical on both sides. He has a perfect little jag, uh, jagged uh, zigzag on both left and right side. Um, underneath his eyes are very similar, so we look for the symmetry um, when we're looking for Leek. Then we have Carson. Um, right now, Carson is the largest, but that is something that can change um, throughout the seasons, throughout the years. Uh, but right now, he is one of the larger ones. Um, he has some very distinct markings um, directly underneath his eye. It's somewhat subtle because he also has some asymmetrical marks on the corners of his eyes. But I look under his eyes and I can find under the left eye, he has a gray marking that goes almost all the way up to his lower eye lid. We have Goodall. Goodall is actually fairly easy to identify as well. Um, he has bright white uh, patches on either side of his cheek, so he sticks out pretty well. And then Beanie is the shy one, um, doesn't have a lot of very distinct markings, which in itself is something that we can look for um, to see who's who. So those are how we can identify the wolves. Um, again, they're a little bit shy today, not necessarily uh, walking around. Um, I know Brian was trying to get the camera up to the top of the exhibit where they're kind of hanging out there right now. Uh, maybe they'll run down in a little while. Uh, we are going to be looking for some questions as well, if anybody has some questions. Uh, for size-wise, we said these guys are some of the smaller of the wolves, and typically you will find that their weight is usually between 45 and something like 70 pounds. Um, right now, they look a lot like a wolf. I know that sounds really weird that I'm saying that, but there you've got that long, shaggy hair, very wolf-like features. I say that because pretty soon, they're gonna be shedding that winter coat and they will end up having very short hair instead of long hair. And at this point, at least to me, they look a lot more like a very large German Shepherd with that short hair. So that's why we are constantly taking pictures of these because their appearances do change quite often. So 
So again, we're just trying to get some pictures of them at the top of the exhibit as they are being a little bit shy. We do find that they're most active in the morning. So when we first come and we're checking on the animals, I will often find all six of them down front. Um, they really don't necessarily like all this construction noise, so they're staying away from it by being on the back side of the exhibit. Um, and then they'll also be pretty active uh, later in the afternoon and evening. Um, we have been seeing them go into the pool, we're seeing them drink, uh, we see them very wet, um, so they're definitely using the pool, which will be great in the summertime. Um, they're often exploring their entire exhibit. Um, it's, a, it's a really great exhibit and has three window viewing areas for the public. Um, it's fenced all around, um, but they still have about one third of their exhibit is in an area where uh, guests can't get to. So they have plenty of places that they can go and chill out if they feel like being alone. A lot of people wonder what we feed these guys. Uh, these guys get a mixture of meat, carnivore meat, and they will also get some chow that's specifically made for exotic canines. That's the name, exotic canine. We'll also supplement with some um, frozen mice. We do a little bit of enrichment for these guys. Um, it's not too much because we're very hands off um, because of the species, uh, the reintroduction program. Uh, we're very limited to what we can actually do with these guys. Uh, but we can give them a natural type enrichment like uh, sticks from say our porcupine exhibit or from our lynx exhibit. Um, Scents from animals exhibits. Uh, we can scatter their food around. Uh, we can add rotten logs and just very natural stuff like that, something that they would see in the wild. All right, so we do have some questions that have been coming through. Um, Katie would like to know what are some of their threats? Hi, Katie. Um, that's an awesome question. Uh, as we said, these guys were ended up being extinct in the wild back in the mid 1970s. Um, sorry, 1970s. Um, they were in conflict with basically livestock and uh, cattle herders, and so they were trapped and hunted uh, to keep the cattle safe. Uh, today, they have a loss of habitat. There's still a lot of cattle in the area, livestock in the area. And so people are still a little weary of wolves. Right. Danielle would like to know, are these the only type of wolf that we have? Hi, Danielle. Um, here at Stone Zoo, yes, this is the only type of wolf we have, Mexican gray wolves, which is a subspecies of the North American gray wolf. Right. Susan and Maria are both curious as to what we feed them, like what they eat. Hi, Susan and Maria. Um, their favorite thing is the raw meat that we give them. It's called carnivore meat. Um, it has a mixture, it looks a lot like hamburger. Uh, it has a mixture of uh, different types of vitamins and supplements in it, so it's very healthy for them. And then we give them a little bit of dog chow, specifically for wolves and foxes. It's called exotic canine. Karen would like to know if they're related to each other or related to the last pack. Great question, Karen. Um, these guys are related to each other. They're actually six brothers. Um, it was a litter of nine. They were born uh, just two years ago. Um, and they are not related to the last pack that we had here. Uh, John was wondering if you could tell us more about how zoos are trying to help Mexican gray wolves. Hi, John. Um, that's a great uh, question. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're participating in a species survival program. Um, certain times, uh, we've actually been done breeding here uh, before, back in, I want to say it was 2005, uh, we had eight pups born here. 
uh, but also they're looking for facilities to hold animals as well. So this year we won't be doing any breeding and instead we're maintaining this pack um, of very genetically uh, desirable wolves, um, all male. Uh, Alan was wondering if in the future are we going to separate them or send some away to other zoos? Very good question, Alan. Um, it, we have no idea. It's really up to U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Uh, they own these guys. They tell us what to do. Um, as we said, they are uh, very desirable genetically, so they are very important uh, for their genetics. So we don't know. They could say, keep these guys here. Uh, they might take one to go to another facility to breed. They may leave one and give us a female to breed and then find a home for the other brothers. Um, we really don't know, so you'll have to stay tuned for that one. Timothy is wondering, who is the alpha? Oh, awesome, <laughs> Timothy. Of course, I knew somebody was gonna ask me that. Right now, actually, there is no alpha that we see of. Um, the most dominant or the alpha is generally one that you're going to see who's going to be running around the exhibit and have their tail up that shows the dominance and the other wolves will come and have their tail lowered uh, depending on where their tail is you can actually tell where they are in the pecking order um, but when we're watching these guys run around i've really been looking and everybody has their tail pretty close to the same height so right now, nobody's alpha. Um, as I said, right at the moment, Carson is the biggest of the wolves. Uh, he's pretty brave, so my bet right now is gonna be Carson, but go home me on that. All right, and I think we have time for one more question. Uh, so Matthew is wondering, how do they adapt to cold weather if they're indigenous to New Mexico? Excellent question, Matthew. Um, because they're Mexican gray wolves, they, they all have that same, or gray wolves, they all have part of that same gene. And it can get cold in that area. If you think of a desert, at night can get extremely cold. Um, so as we were saying before, right now they still have their winter coat. It is a very thick, heavy winter coat that keeps them very well insulated. Come summer, they will lose that coat they're gonna have short hair, they're gonna look like a really large German Shepherd, and uh, they also have the pool to keep them cool. So as a pack, they stay together when they're sleeping for body warmth, and they have um, shelter, uh, they have multiple dens, um, as well as uh, that nice warm coat. Okay, so I think that's the time that we have for today. Um, I'd like to thank you all for stopping here. Um, hi, finally, now they come and say hi. <laughs> um, so we can't wait to see you guys. Keep supporting your zoo, watch us every day, ask you questions. Really, now? <laughs> and um, we will continue doing this and we all can't wait to see you guys. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye.